Acts chapter 17, verse 16. While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was greatly distressed to see that the city was full of idols. The Apostle Paul would go down in history as one of the greatest communicators of the gospel. He took the gospel, which is of Jewish roots, and communicated it effectively to a Gentile world. In Acts chapter 17, the Apostle Paul was in Athens. His reputation has gone before him, and he was a wanted man by the religious authorities. Now, if you were to trace his missionary journey, you would have noted that in Presidian Antioch, he was persecuted and abused. In Lystra, he was nearly stoned to death. In Iconium, he was slandered and attacked. In Philippi, he ended up in jail. In Thessalonica, he was subjected to a riot. In Berea, he had to be escorted out of the city. And that took him to Athens, the intellectual pinnacle of Greek civilization. What Mecca is to the Muslims, what Jerusalem is to the Jews, what the Ganges River is to the Hindus, Athens was to the intellectual elite of that time. It was a city that was filled with intellectuals and philosophers. This was where human wisdom was sought after and worshipped. Athens was the eye of Greece. It was the art centre of the ancient world. Luminaries like Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, Alexander the Great, they all came out of Athens. And this was also the place where evangelism was at its hardest because the Bible tells us that the message of the cross is foolishness to the wisdom of this world. But standing in Athens, Paul felt the pressure of the lostness of man upon his own soul. In verse 16, he says he was greatly distressed to see that the city was full of idols. Now, this has got to be the inner posture of the evangelist. And this is what we need to see Singapore turn Godward. We don't need more programs or more campaigns or more strategies. We first need to feel the lostness of men. And you and I can never effectively communicate this gospel to the lost until we first feel the pressure of the lostness of men within our own soul. And we can never turn Singapore Godward until we can feel the lostness of man upon our own soul. And when I think about our unsaved loved ones and colleagues and friends and neighbours, do we feel their lostness? Do we value their souls? You know, in Luke chapter 15, Jesus told us three parables that spoke about the value of lost people. Luke chapter 15 verse 1 to 7 talks about the lost sheep. In Luke 15, verse 8 to 10, it talks about the lost coin. And then in Luke 15, verse 11 to 31, it talks about the lost son. And in each of these parables, the focus is not on those who remain in safety, but rather the concern is always on the one who was lost. And this is true throughout the earthly ministry of our Lord Jesus. And in each instance, something of great worth was lost and the owner must go through much inconvenience and pain to find it back. And what a fitting picture of the value of the human soul in the eyes of God. The highlight of each of these three parables are found in the closing verse, and every one of them speaks of the value of a human soul. Like Luke 15, verse 7, Jesus said, I tell you that in the same way there will be much rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Luke 15, verse 10, In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Luke 15, verse 32, but we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost, but now am found. And ladies and gentlemen, that's the value of the human soul. So the question I have for all of us today, do we feel the pressure of the lostness of man upon our own soul? And I think this is where we must begin in order to turn Singapore Godward. Amen.